Hello and welcome to lecture 10 in Mathematics 2. Today we are going to talk about first order differential equations. Now, uh, first let me introduce some motivation. So why do we um, really want to model some processes with differential equations? And here is an example. So um, here I have a, um, a cup of hot tea, right? And um, of course, if I leave it here, it's going to cool down. So, and eventually it is cooled down to the temperature of the room. Now, um, so let, let, let me write it down. So, uh, suppose that uh, the temperature of uh, the VT is, is T capital. T capital is the temperature of, of my cup of tea. Um, and... Uh, it is a function of, of time, right? So uh, the, the more time goes uh, goes by, the, the cooler it becomes, right? So uh, so small t is, is time measured in, I don't know, minutes or whatever, or in seconds. So, um, and eventually the t is going to cool down, right? So probably it, it's going to be something like this, right? So if you graph the, um, uh, t capital uh, as a function of t small, so the temperature as a function of uh, uh, of time, right? So uh, eventually it is going to cool down to the temperature of the room, right? So the temperature of my room is 20, 22 degrees at the moment, right? So 22 degrees and probably initially the temperature of, of the tea, so when I just added boil, boiling water to it was about, I guess, 95 degrees or something like that. Right, and then it's kind of clear that the, the temperature is going to steadily kind of go, go down and eventually it's going to stabilize at 22 two degrees. Right, um, and Newton's law of cooling says that uh, the rate at which uh, the cup of hot tea is, is cooling down is, is actually proportional to the difference between uh, the its current temperature and the temperature of the surrounding, right? So in, in my case, uh, the temperature of the room is 22 degrees. So the temperature of the T minus the temperature of the room is T capital minus T, right? Now, so what is the rate of change of the uh, temperature of my uh, cup, of, uh, cup of tea? So it is D T capital, D T small, right? So this is the rate of change. So the rate at which um, my um, cups of tea temperature is changing. So it's proportional to the difference between this. So it is actually some some co coefficient k times the difference between t minus 22. Well, uh, so another thing that uh, I, I should note that um, the t is cooling down, right? So which means that um, the temperature is decreasing. So the uh, first derivative should be negative. So which is why I'm going to, to write a negative sign here, assuming that k is, is a positive positive number. Now, the, the, this number k uh, d depends on, on the particular, you know, so I have the, the, this cup of tea, so it is made of uh, probably some porcelain, I'm, I'm not sure. So it depends on the, on the material, it depends on, on the um, area, top area, because most of the heat, I, I guess, um, uh, dissipates through the surface of, of the tea. Right, so the, the, this K is specific to, to every cup of tea, right? But the whole process is, is governed by the, the, this kind of, uh, kind of a law, and it, it's called Newton's law of cooling. And uh, so notice that what we have here is we have the, this T capital is the temperature as a function of T small, and as a function of time, is the unknown function. And we have an equation that relates uh, the unknown function to its first derivative and uh, such an equation is called the differential equation so so and again so this is Newton's law of cooling and it also applies to warming and the idea is that we want to find the temperature and basically um, if uh, the ambient temperature is constant well to be honest it's not exactly right because you know as t cools down probably at the same time it warms up, you know, the um, ambient temperature by like a little tiny fraction of a degree or something like that. So it, it's not like 
it's probably not exactly 100% accurate, but it is close to accurate, right? So if we assume that the temperature of the uh, ambient temperature is, is constant, then we are going to get this uh, this equation, right? So th this is the differential equation. So dt dt equals k times t minus t, right? Uh, well, so here, if, if you write it like this, then, then k is, is, is going to be a negative number, right? And if you prefer k to be a positive number, then you should uh, write with, with a minus sign in, instead. Right, uh, and um, the idea is that if we kind of, once we have formulated the law, Newton's law of cooling, so the idea is that, um, I mean, it's, it's just like a general general rule, right? So, but if, if you want, if now we want to be more specific, like to, to, to figure out what the temperature is going to be in 10 minutes, in 20 minutes, in 30 minutes, and so on, right? So we, we will want to find, um, to express our unknown function in terms of the um, independent variable. And uh, in, in particular here, it, it happens um, that the, the, the solution is, is this. Well, um, so note that um, as I already said, uh, uh, that k here is, is actually a negative number, right? So imagine what, what happens, you know, um, what happens if um, after a long period of time, right? So if you imagine that t is a very large number or that the t goes to, to infinity, then basically what, what you have here is e to uh, to a negative power, right? Um, to e to something like, I mean, if, if t is say, I don't know, 100 and k is one, k is negative one, then it is going to be something like e to the negative 100, right? So this is going to be a, a number that is close to zero, right? So, and essentially when t goes to zero, this, this thing goes to, to zero, and you, you see that it, mean, it means that uh, the temperature of my cup of tea is, is going to be equal to um, to the ambient temperature of the room, so which makes perfect sense. All right, uh, and there, there is a number of uh, reasons why differential equations are so ubiquitous in um, a lot of areas, in physics and engineering and in life sciences and even in social sciences. Um, so it is very, very common to formulate some kind of laws of nature or some observations in terms of um, rules that uh, relate some unknown function to its first or to its second derivative. Like Newton's law of, of cooling that, that we, you just saw is, um, it relates the unknown function to its first derivative. But uh, Newton's, what is it called? Second law of motion, right? So force equals um, mass times acceleration, right? So acceleration is in fact the second derivative um, um, of the uh, coordinate of a moving object, right? So and then if A is the second, let, let's say if, if you have a moving object and you take its second derivative, um, and if you assume that the force somehow depends on uh, on the position of a moving object, then you will get uh, a second order differential equation from the um, Newton's from Newton's law, laws of, of, of motion, right? And uh, be because of that, basically, so differential equations are extremely useful, are an extremely useful tool in, in modeling a lot of real life phenomena.